first, it was the closure of bars and entertainment venues. Then came stricter social distancing measures that resulted in restaurants scrambling to switch to takeaway and delivery services. Even McDonald's had to shut its doors for a while. The food and beverage industry contributes 0.8% to Singapore's gross domestic product. The estimated 12,000 restaurants here employ 200,000 workers whose jobs are now in jeopardy because diners have vanished in the time of coronavirus. To learn about the extent of the impact to the F&B industry, we spoke to a local SME in the F&B scene. Thanks for tuning into Bridging the Gap by Seedin. We have two very special guests joining us today. Stephen, business owner of Atas Food Private Limited, and Jin, an investor on Seedin's platform. Yeah, hi. Hi, hello. Hello, guys. Let's start by introducing yourselves to our listeners. I'm in the financial industry for about 15 years, and then I ventured into uh, F&B seven years back. So Atas Food Private Limited was uh, founded by me and three other partners uh, about three years ago, and we specialize in uh, Thai food particularly into Thai boat noodle, which we see there's a market in Singapore as there isn't many significant brand of Thai boat noodle in Singapore yet. Three years we built uh, three outlets in Singapore, Changi City Point, Bugis Junction and Salita Mall. Um, okay, well, my name is Jin. Well, I'm from Singapore, but um, I lived abroad in uh, Cape Town for a few years and I'm here during um, the coronavirus when travel restrictions are put in place. I found out about Seedon when I was about 14 years old and um, after I turned 18 years old, I decided to invest with Seedon because um, the idea of crowdfunding was very interesting and I was also looking for an opportunity to invest. Thanks for the introduction. Now with so many investment and financing options available in the market, what made you decide to choose crowdfunding? I was already familiar with crowdfunding uh, like about three or four years back. When I turned 18 years old and started to start building my investment portfolio, I was trying to look to diversify my money. And Seedon was the one I chose because first of all, it was incredibly easy to get started. Second of all, the interest rates and the interest payments were much higher. And third of all, um, compared to its competitors, Seedon had an extremely low default rate. In fact, I think their default rate is 0%. I think the crowdfunding platform has been a savior for SME that started less than two years trying to make a name for themselves in the market. And I'm sure that for SME owners to take a bank loan to expand, it's not that easy, especially when you are just in your first two to three years. So crowdfunding is there to actually bridge this gap. On to the topic of the coronavirus and the circuit breaker. Can you share with us how has the current situation impacted your business? I think it affected everybody all kinds of business. Uh, I would say how it affected F&B industry and particularly my F&B business. For my, the sales dropped tremendously. We had dropped to less than 20% of pre-COVID sales. What strategies are you applying in order to keep your cash flow healthy? And also, what are you doing differently in order to survive through this challenging period? I guess in having challenging times, one thing is for sure, we need to change. We need to change our strategy to stay afloat, to stay alive, in order to fight when phase two open up. For us, we want to keep our costs low. That's for sure. Keeping our costs low means no other choice but to give up part-timers. The government has just announced the mandatory rental relief program for SMEs. For FMB, we are eligible for four months of rental waiver, two from the government and two from the landlord. So I think it's a very great initiative to help us stay afloat for now. That will greatly reduce our costs. As we all know, for FMB in Singapore, rental will usually pick up around 15 to 20% of your revenue. So that helps us relieve our costs. I understand that Atas Food had recently opted to fully repay their loan seven months in advance. As an investor in Atas Food's crowdfunding campaign, what does this early repayment mean to you? To be honest, it wasn't a, an extremely big deal for me, at least in my opinion, when I make an investment on Seedon, I'm prepared to wait for the duration in which my money will be locked up. But it was a very nice surprise 
it was really great because my liquidity was freed up and now I get to utilize it for other purposes and to invest more seed in deals and hopefully to get better um, interest rate based on my principal investment. These are unprecedented times and there are a lot of unknowns yet to come. What are some of Atas Foods' plans in the short term? Our short-term plans for now is to go into low rental places like HDB shop houses, shop houses that are not in suburban places. I think that will take a good 10% off your revenue. You will need to focus on uh, delivery. I think moving on, this will be the new norm. This is something that we are looking into it now. Before we go, do you have anything you'd like to say to our community of SMEs and investors on Seedin? Okay, I'd like to say a big thank you to the community of investors in Seedin for putting their trust with us, local SMEs, for us to take our business to the next level. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Bridging the Gap. We hope to have been able to bridge the gap between our local SMEs and investors to help both parties better understand the difficulties faced by each other. Now that you've heard the struggles of our fellow restaurateur, the rest is up to you. As Singaporeans, we should all do our part to help one another and that includes lending a helping hand and supporting our homegrown SMEs. Before we go, and if you haven't already done so, we'd like to invite you to take part in the poll on our website. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Bridging the Gap.